Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the lateral analysis of the upper body, right? Last video was about the lower body. So let's start with this. We will be talking about the SI joint, which is present over here, then the lumbar, thoracic, cervical and atlanto occipital. And the first thing I want you guys to know is the line of gravity. If you can see at SI joint, the line of gravity passes anteriorly. Then as you go down, it goes posteriorly at the lumbar spine. At thoracic, it again goes anteriorly, cervical again posteriorly, and then atlantoaxial again anteriorly. So it keeps shifting between anterior and posterior, and that's how it creates that balance. And what do we know about the line of gravity? Basically, if it goes posteriorly, the gravity will be pulling your body in extension and all the flexor muscles will be acting to get you back into the position. And if it goes anteriorly, your gravity will be pulling it in flexion and all the extensor muscles will be working to get you back into the right position. So at SI joint, the external moment because the line of gravity is anterior is nutation. What is nutation? It is the gap over here between the sacrum and the pelvis which will be increasing during nutation. If you want to exactly know how the movement occurs, you can check out my video on SI joint biomechanics and you'll get a better idea. Okay, you'll get to know about the kinematics and kinetics, both of them. It's just two of the videos. Then going to the internal moment. So this is the gravity is putting the SI joint into nutation. Okay, nutation and the internal moment creates a counter nutation to get the balance back. And this is done by two things, active and passive. Active is your muscle. So over here, the muscle that helps in counter nutation is your transverse abdominus. Okay, transverse abdominus, if you remember, we saw it on the jaw in our spine and also the SI joint videos that it goes around your trunk like this and creates the stability, right? So this will help in preventing that excessive nutation. And then passively, there is the sacrotuberous, sacrospinous, iliolumbar, all these ligaments around which stabilize your SI joint. Then going on to the next one, the lumbar spine over here. If you can see the line of gravity goes posteriorly, right? So what will be the natural forces that will be acting here? Gravity will be pulling your lumbar spine into extension. Now this will be countered by flexion. What are the flexing muscles? Abdominals, obliques. So that's what I mentioned here, external movement of extension, which is countered by flexion, which is created by your abdominals and obliques. Now abdominals and obliques, you know where they are, right? On the front like this, this is the abdominals and then obliques will be coming from the side. And this creates the flexion torque and prevents you from going into total extension at the lumbar spine. And then passively, there will be the anterior longitudinal ligament, iliolumbar ligament, annulus fibrosis and joint capsule, which will be preventing that extension movement. So over here, the anterior longitudinal ligament. And when I say joint capsule, it's basically the capsule that surrounds your facet joint, right? Again, if you are not familiar with the anatomy or the muscles or the ligaments, you can always go back and check out my video on biomechanics of the lumbar spine. You'll get a way better idea. Okay. Then going on to the thoracic spine, the line of gravity over here will be passing anteriorly. So the external movement will be for flexion and all the trunk muscles will be creating that extension movement, correct? And this will be done by all your spinal and thoracic extensors. So if you can see over here, line of gravity, how it is anteriorly. So the flexion gravity will be pulling your spine into flexion and all the extensors muscle acting to get back into extension. And the ligaments over here will be the posterior longitudinal ligament and the interspinous ligament, correct? So over here, if you can see the pink part, that will be the placement of all the ligaments to prevent that flexion movement. And then next going on to the cervical spine, again it goes posteriorly, which will create an extension moment, which will be countered by all your cervical flexors, correct? And this will be done by your anterior scalene, longus capitis and coli, 
and then the passive structures like your anterior longitudinal ligament so again over here it will be anterior so you can see the pattern right anterior posterior anterior posterior and even in the lower limb there was the same pattern and along with this anterior longitudinal ligament there will be annulus fibrosis and the capsule at the facet joint which will be preventing this movement and then finally coming on to the last joint that is the atlanto occipital joint which is pretty complex because the ligaments if you go to see there are tons of ligaments over here and i will suggest you guys to watch my video especially on this one i'll link it over here you'll get a way better idea of what are the passive structures present and how they act so passively there are ligamentum nuke alar ligament and also there is the atlanto axial and atlanto occipital membrane I talk about each of the bone and how the ligament goes from atlas to axis and connects and what is its function. So check out this video and these passive structures along with the active structures will be functioning. Now what will be the active structures? If you see atlanto occipital joint, the line of gravity goes anteriorly. So the gravity will be pulling your head into flexion, right? So you need the extensors. Now in the cervical region, if you remember the extensors are like the cervices capitis, semispinalis capitis and cervices, all these muscles which are very deep and create extension at your head. Now let's quickly summarize what did we see? Line of gravity keeps shifting between anterior and posterior and two things are there which prevent that excessive line of gravity shift to either one side and that are the active and the passive structures in our body. The active structures are like the muscles like transverse abdominus over here. Then if you go up there are the abdominals. Then if you go up, there are spinal extensors. Again, there will be your cervical neck flexors. And then over here, the head extensors, right? And then the passive structures were all the ligaments. So again, just to summarize, over here, there will be external movement at lumbar spine, which will be countered by flexion movement. At SI joint, it will be nutation countered by counter nutation. At thoracic, it will be flexion countered by extension. And then over here cervical, it will be extension countered by flexion. So with that, we finish off the lateral analysis of our body. Basically, now if you see a person who is having a bad posture, you will be able to realize that, okay, the line of gravity has shifted anteriorly. So all the anterior muscles are activating too much and the posterior muscles are not activating enough. So you need to strengthen those muscles and get his posture into the right position. And that's how you make postural correction. Now in next video, we will be talking about what are the pathological postures that we see in a normal basis and how to detect them. So stay tuned for that. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also, let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.